So, all you need to know is we're about to make a video reviewing ghost footage caught on CCTV mm -hmm. and possibly debunking, just giving our thoughts as general ghost paranormal experts on it. Second, whilst we've been filming these videos in this very old eighth floor flat in Cologne next to a haunted cathedral, there's been a fuck ton of banging. I'm freaking out about it, I'm not gonna lie. I don't love it. And I'm sure we'll do this video and we won't even hear a bang, but I hope. But that said, listen out. Full disclosure, this fridge sometimes makes a clunking noise. Yeah, it's like very a click. distinct from banging. If you hear a more of a bang or a slam or a knock, that's ghost slash other things. It's def definitely not fridge. Did you just assume my paranormal? <laughs> uh. Yeah. And then... Okay, what was happening in 1999? The Venga Boys were in the charts. Um, I was recently born. Yeah, I was... It's still in the womb. Yeah. Mm. And mm -hmm. Maurice Stewart was still doing the news. Good for her. ...to be two ghostly apparitions in the grounds of Belgrave Hall Museum. No one can explain what or who they are. Our correspondent Emma Simpson went to... This is news. This is real BBC news, not like Fox oh, news. dark Sunday morning and security cameras capture two mysterious figures. They only appear for a few seconds, followed by a swirling white mist on top of the wall. I can't it see it. It appears uh, for a, a, a second, or oh, for five seconds. That's rain, isn't it? Was that what you were talking about, the picture, rain? And it's not been blown into picture. It is a complete mystery. No, 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 no. no. Sorry, Moira, that's bullshit. It was raining and there were two big rains. Have been heard. Drops. And even the smells of old fashioned cooking have apparently wafted. Old fashioned garden. cooking? We have a lot of visitors of all the Why is she dressed um, like is that? Is that a ghost? Costume today. It's like Victorian Lily Allen. The experts are also puzzled. They're trying to figure out. It's obviously rain. You can see it moving through the frame. Got a ghost on camera. Emma Simpson, BBC News. BBC. Antique store ghost. In May 2016, the CCTV cameras in the one hundred. Sorry, just to pause for a second. We're currently above an antique shop, so the base of this is true. Yeah. The first floor is an antique shop, and then the. Uh, the that sounded like a door opening. Shall I go and check? No, because what, what am I going to do if you get stolen? Yeah, but that sounded like somebody was coming in. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> there are no, there's no doors in this apartment, Charles, apart from the front door. Well, that's the one I don't want people to come through. The front door's closed. Anyway, as I was saying, we're above an antique store and we're at the top, we're in the roof. This is the antique shop. And then that building there, after all those coloured ones, that's where Chelsea and Jim are staying. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hello. Ew, look at this. <laughs> Is that a chicken? If I was to describe a ghost, I'd say steam person. Yeah, but historically... <laughs> <laughs> and they would be happy with that. They'd take that as a compliment. Yeah. Historically, is that a shooting star? Oh, Sorry, oh, seriously. Jimmy. What is what are those what are those circle light things? What the fuck is that? Get is the that camera. That? Get is the that camera. That? Jim. What the fuck is that? Is that coming out on camera? It kind of is. What is that? I think it's bats. Why would they be lit up though? Because the cathedral's lit up and it's No. Really? Do you think? Moss? That big? I hope not. What the hell? That is weird. Are they drones? And why wouldn't they be around like that steeple there? Can we go over? Shall we? Okay, we're gonna go and see if we can get closer to the weird cathedral lights. Because that's, it's not freaked me out, because actually it was quite amazing, whatever it is, but I just don't know, genuinely don't know what that could be. <laughs> They're 
bats. They have to be bats. But why aren't they attracted to the big buildings? It doesn't make any sense. How does a bat move? They fly, they, but they swoop. The Luxor in Vegas has a whole ecosystem at the top. Massive moss, all this shit. Because it's just like that massive light. Do you think that's the weirdest thing? What time is it, Jim? Midnight. That's weird to me, ow. But it will get there and it'll be gone. It's no, but it's gonna be bats. But I've never seen, because bats are... They're black, aren't they? Or dark brown. They don't really reflect light. It's bats, bats, guys. <laughs> it's bats. It was bats. It was bats. Bats, that'll be bats, that will. So, yeah, shall we, what was number? If only somebody had said when we were here, oh, that's probably bats. Yeah, so speak up next time. What were we saying? Oh yeah, we live above an antiques store. And this is CCTV of an antique store. You ready, Charles? Yeah, I just write in bats. Charles is just writing bats. Charles. Yeah, that to me looks like film over film. It's quite creepy. No one's saying it's not, but even if you look down here, you're getting all this interference. They went out to check the area, but no one was there. After looking back over the footage, a figure can clearly be seen walking around. Take a look. Oh, that's weird. That's weird. That's the weirdest one yet. I don't like that one because of how long it gets. Don't like that. The taxi ghost. Oh. Ever since the 2011 earthquake, Japanese taxi drivers have frequently reported ghost passengers, especially in the town of Ishinomaki, which was hit by a tsunami that killed 6,000 people. One of the drivers interviewed told how he picked up a woman from Ishinomaki Station who wanted to go to Minimahama District. When he told the woman that area had been wiped out in the disaster, the woman said, have I died? When the driver turned around to speak to her, she had disappeared. It sounds strange, and you can see why people would blame post-traumatic mm. stress disorder. However, when someone opens your taxi door, and it's caught on camera, PTSD cannot be blamed, and that is exactly what happened here. The video really speaks for itself, so take a look. Oh, God. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I just had a real shiver go down my spine as well. Okay, ignore the banging. Just the way, because why is everyone going, oh, but look at the way the door opens, and not, look at the ghost standing there. Why aren't they focusing on the woman standing in the street? Yeah, and also, that, there's, there's a, a, a massive um, blind spot there. I wasn't lying when I said there are many reports from taxi drivers in Japan of ghosts entering their cars. And just a heads up, this one will not be good for anyone who doesn't like getting into taxis by themselves. It was, of course, taken in Japan, and it's some surveillance footage well, of the taxi driver taxi taxi there. gets into a taxi that just pulled up. But behind him, there is a black shape that follows him. As he opens the car door, it gets very close and gets into the taxi with him. Take a look. I saw it. We've already seen it. <laughs> okay, but where does it come from? Okay. He's getting in. <gasps> oh, that's fucking weird. I hate that. Oh, that's fucking weird. That's straight out of the ring, that is. That's, yeah, that's like on show. Many have likened the apparition to a woman in dark robe like clothing with a hood Oh up. no. Well, I suggested it could be another fake Japanese ghost video. What do you think? Well, so obviously, I think it's been, but I like it. Because it slowly gets more detailed as it moves across. That's what's weird. So the spike I think that's two shots, and they've just masked her doing that and then just changed the opacity a bit. That makes you sleep at night, Chelsea, and you want to believe that, then you go ahead. I think it's 
a Japanese ghost. Nothing's convinced me, I'll be honest. I'm more freaked out by the banging that we've been hearing. Oh but yeah. Maybe that's just our imagination. People will probably watch this back and be like, what banging? You decide. So it was bats, guys. The next door neighbour stopped coming round. He got hit by Lego on the arm and that, and this is a quote, <laughs> brought up a bump. Lego? Lego. How much Lego? Which piece? Did one bit of Lego. Yeah, that's going to be throwing with some force if that's bringing up a bump, isn't it? You can't even throw Lego with force. Wait, if you shot something out of a gun which wasn't hard, would it still hurt? Is yeah. it the speed and velocity, yeah. or is it the, what if I like shot like rubber bullets? What? Yeah, rubber. Yeah, that's hard though. What if I shot like a magician's red ball that turns into four balls? No, because it's got. I could have what's described that, that as what? like foam. Or <laughs> 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 <Well>, sponge. <laughs> Instead, you do a magician's ball. <laughs> <that's four> balls. <laughs> so you hang on. So you're shooting magician's balls out of a gun. Yeah. Does that hurt? No, because there's such a thing as. What is it called? <laughs> Ultimate velocity or something? Yeah. Maximum velocity. Yeah. So a material can only go so fast before it slows That's down. That's not the point. Yeah, it is. That's exactly the point. No, it's not. Is it? <laughs> no, that would be like, would you fall faster if you fell forever? No, you'd just end up at maximum. Yeah, that's what that is. But if you... Shooting a, it out of a gun. A sponge out of a gun at whatever speed a gun shoots at and it hit you. So you can be standing like right in front of it. Would that hurt? Or is the fact that... Because obviously there's like other things I like would friction have of the, the air. Because you'd need something to project it out, wouldn't you? You'd need yeah. an explosion. But once it's on the its own... The force of that hitting the air because it's soft. Ignore the explosion. No, the oh. force of so the. So now you're like thinking about the, the force air. of the magician's ball hitting the air. No, but ignore the air. What? Bit. So we're doing it in a vacuum. You don't. The bit that hurts you when a bullet hits you isn't the air from the explosion. It's I'm the getting to that bit. <laughs> <laughs> so the bullet's leaving the gun. Yeah. Uh, whatever force, thousand mile. Per, it's not that, is it? No, seven hundred miles per hour. I think it's seven hundred actually. Is it seven hundred? Because I thought it was. That feels like a good number. It is. But it's it's hitting the air as it's leaving the barrel of the gun, and that's causing it to destruct itself and not move huh the guns are relevant i just want to point out the, the gun gun's part. not this irrelevant is, the mechanics behind it how a bullet gets shot out of a guns are relevant it's, um, a magician's balls going at 700 Stop miles an hour about a magician's and balls. you walk in you walk into a sponge at 700 miles per hour does it hurt that's the question how it got to that speed is irrelevant you you're now going into the sponge so you no, there's, you're walking and the sponge hits you at seven hundred miles, miles an hour. hour. It's just on its way. Oh my, it's late for a meeting. The sponge. <laughs> I don't think you could get a sponge up to seven hundred oh miles an hour. Oh my god! Don't get it's a thought experiment, Jim. It's not logistical. We're not going to. We're not MythBusters. We're not going to go and do this. We should do this. How big's the sponge? Like, is that relevant again? Because you're going to go. Oh, but the air friction. I think it. Well, would you try it? What? Getting hit by a 700 mile per hour sponge. No, because I have no concept in my brain of whether or not it will feel like nothing or feel like something. I don't know. I think it would be very painful. It's a sponge, though. Yeah, but it's going 700 miles per hour. Anything going of, at 700 miles per hour would hurt. But it's weaker than your skin, is, I think, the, the thing. If you got hit by a string... That doesn't mean anything. It does. No, it doesn't. If you got hit by a string moving at 700 <laughs> so don't bring miles a string per into hour, it. it would just go... <laughs> Into your skin. No, it probably you win. You. you win. You don't. Is it the thing that's moving that wins, or the thing that does? It, is it whether or not you're moving play a part in this? For example, or is it just the hardness of you? I'm trying to think of a good example. If I was shot into a bullet and it was a really big human-sized bullet, and I was shrunk to the size of a bullet. I would crumple on the bullet. I wouldn't shoot through the bullet. I think it's to do with how hard you are and not how fast you... The thing that's moving doesn't always win. Yeah, no, it's about the speed of the thing. Is well, So you think that the thing that's moving always wins? Yeah. If you swung yeah. a wrecking ball made of sponge yeah. at a wall... Yeah. The wall wins. Yeah. The Even though the wall is not moving, yeah. other than like the ground moving in the universe and stuff like that, which is very far. Mm. But which wins, speed or? But then sturdity? you could hit like a a plastic bottle, for example. Yeah. Not that hard. 
Mm. But if a plastic bottle hit you with force you that was travelling quickly, that would hurt. You've turned it into something that is solid, though. A, a sponge crumples. Yeah, but it's soft, though. It's not that soft. Just a plastic bottle would hurt if I just threw it at your face right now. I don't know how we finished this discussion. 